الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الاحباب we can never get enough warnings or reminders about the importance of safeguarding our tongues and refraining from backbiting one another and all of us have enough sins to busy ourselves with our own issues and problems and sins and sinfulness. And if we look at the text of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, we'll see that that illustrates or that they illustrate for us the importance of safeguarding our tongue. And that this is also from one of the manners in our uh, that we were discussing regarding akhlaq, regarding uh, righteous manners and righteous mannerisms, that to refrain and restrain one's tongue and refrain from lying about people and searching out other people's faults and cursing people and backbiting them, spreading rumors about them so that way it circulates, circulates around the community that these are from the characteristics or akhlaq madhmuma or akhlaq sayya meaning bad and evil manners manners that are unbefitting of the muslim and imam bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala said in his book adab al-mufrid he entitled a chapter a whole chapter to this and he called it babu uh, babu ghaybati وَقُولِ لَعَزَّ وَجَّ وَلَا يَغْتَابْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا Imam Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala entitled a chapter in Adab al-Mufrid. He entitled it, called it the chapter of ghiba. Ghiba meaning uh, backbiting and the statement of Allah the Almighty. In which he said, "Wala yaghtab ba'dukum ba'dah," where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al-Hujurat that do not backbite one another. Then Imam Bukhari brought the Hadith, which you'll find in Bukhari and Muslim, and this is another uh, leth or another uh, narration of the same Hadith which is well known, but this is just has a little bit of different uh, al-fad or some parts of the hadith, some of the statements uh, differ slightly with the other narrations which are mashhur. قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا مُحَمَدِ بِنْ يُوسُفِ قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا نَظْرُ قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا أَبُوْ عَوَّامْ عَبْدُلَزِيز ابن رَبِيعْ الْبَاهِرِ قال حدثنا أبو زبير محمد عن جابر بن عبد الله قال كنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فأتى على قبرين يعذب صاحبها صاحبهما فقال إنهما ليعذبان في كبير وبلى أما أهلهما فكان يغتاب الناس وما الآخر فكان لا يتأذى من البو فدعا بجريدة رتبة أو بجريدتين فكسرهما ثم أمر بكل كسرة فغرس فغرست على قبر على قبر فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما إنه سيحو سي سَيُهُ يَهُونُونَ سَيُهُونُونَ مِنَ مِنْ عَذَابِهِمَا مَا كَانَتَ رُتْبَتَيْنِ أَوْ لَمْ تَبَسَا In this hadith of the Prophet alayhi afdal salatu was salam He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said uh, uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah رضي الله تعالى عنه said, we were with the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we came 
to, or he came to a uh, two graves. And that the, the people inside of them were being punished in the graves. And this is only known, this was known by the Prophet wasallam. and this was some Amurul Ghaibiyya, some uh, of the knowledge of the unseen that Allah gave the Prophet wasallam. The only way the Prophet wasallam had this miracle or had this this knowledge which was not would not have been known to the other people was only because Allah gave him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this bit of knowledge of the unseen. So Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, We were with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we came to two graves in which the people were being punished inside. And then he said Verily they are being punished for something which uh, is not considered great, meaning not considered great for them. They, they didn't take it, they took it lightly. Most of us take it lightly. And rather, as for one of them, he used to backbite the people. And as for the other one, then he used to not protect himself when he urinated, meaning to make istinja or protect his clothing or what have you. Then the Prophet wasallam he called for a uh, like a dry branch or, or a, a branch, a, a wet branch. And or it was two wet branches as the narrator said. So the narrator was not sure if it was one or two in his recollection. And he broke them in half, or he broke it in half. Then he commanded that each piece be planted on a grave, or be put on a grave. And then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily, it will, their punishments will be lightened. Or I hope that their punishments will be lightened as long as these branches remain wet. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we see the importance of avoiding that akhlaq madhmuma that we mentioned, the seriousness and the bad manner from amongst the bad mannerisms uh, such as backbiting and slander. And that this, by backbiting and slandering, ayol ahbab, those are one of the sins and characteristics. They're one of the major sins and characteristics because they're mentioned with a punishment. And that's one way you know if a sin is major or not. Uh, one of the indications is if it's mentioned in the Sharia with a punishment. So the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّهُمْ لِيَعْدِبَانْ وَمَا يَعْدِبَانْ فِي كَبِيرٌ أَمَّا أَحَدُهُمَا فَكَانَ لَا يَسْتَرُ in another narration he was, he, uh, of the same hadith, it was mentioned that he mentioned Namima. And because they were being punished in the grave, it shows that these sins are great and that the, the jaza or the reward for these kind of sins is punishment in the grave. And you only get punishment in the grave not for something light, it's for something that you've done major. It's a, it's a big sin. To, to warrant being punished in the grave, may Allah protect us from that, and may Allah help us to safeguard our tongues. So Ayyad we want to, want to do our best to avoid that uh, characteristic of slandering people and backbiting people, following people's faults, being suspicious of people. There's a time and a place to uh, for those people who are ahlan for that, who, who have the knowledge and the fiqh of the deen and the wara, you know, when they have taqwa and they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for them to look in a manner, for example, if someone has innovated in the religion and when it is necessary to refute someone and maybe look at some of their statements to collect their statements and so forth in order to warn the community against the harm of that individual. That's not for everyone. So we have to be very cautious about being suspicious of one another, being suspicious of our brothers and sisters, being suspicious of anyone in that sense, uh, to where it 
leads us to fall into sin, and especially these major sins, which are punishable. Uh, there are sins that will be the person who does this and engages in this sin will be punished in the graves. So we have to strive our best to avoid that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us against it. And the Prophet والسلام, has warned us against it. Letting us know that lying, slander, cursing people, uh, and speaking ill of people in, in, a, in a way in which the intention is to spread evil throughout the community. All of these kind of things are a, a sinfulness that we want to avoid and they are ahkam that we gain from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from evil akhlaq. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those who He favors to have taqwa and who He has favored to have good manners and who practices the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked su'ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an akthiri ma yadkhul an nas al janna qala taqullahu wa husn al khulq the prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked what will enter the people the most into paradise and the prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said fearing allah at taqullahu wa husn al khulq and having good manners. So may Allah bless us with good manners. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.